Welcome to the Pro Pitch webinar. We're going to talk today about testing standards, take you through a deeper dive into data. And we've got a guest speaker from FIFA and Mikel Benetti, the program lead for the Natural and Hybrid uh, Sports Surfaces uh, program. Uh, we will also talk about data, the insights, the actions, how you can benefit from it in a self-assessment self capacity. Don't worry if you need to jump off at any point, we will do the recording and um, you can ask us questions throughout. And if we can't get to the questions at the end, we will, of course, try and follow them up with more detailed answers off the back of the presentation. Um, so quick introductions to everyone. Um, today we've got Keith McPherson, Associate Director in the Sports Labs and manages the, the operations of ProPitch. Um, Keith has got many years of experience in testing, management, project management, tournament delivery under his belt. Um, then our keynote speaker and guest is Mikhail Benetti today. Mikhail has been working in this industry for, for many, many years. Um, and has a very good handle on the technical aspect as well as the, the project delivery and management side of it. Um, we welcome Mikhail today and thank you for joining us, Mikhail, on what's a very busy schedule for yourself. Um, next, we have Ian Craig. Ian is currently in the Ivory Coast, so he's going to do a Q&A with us. The Wi-Fi is not um, fantastic, so we'll, we'll chat to Ian through the consultant's um, approach and, and some of the detail with him later. Finally, we've got Dean Tingley, who Dean is going to do the deeper dive into some of the data, some insights that you guys can really benefit from, compare your pitch and engage with us after as well to get a more specific comparison to, to, to your facility or pitches. Um, Dean's in Azerbaijan, so again, Dean's struggling with Wi-Fi, but the guys have made a, a special effort to get this on today, so thank you both for, for doing that. So a bit quick profile on ProPitch. ProPitch, um, our motto is if you can measure it, you can manage it. We use software, equipment, uh, objective data to, to help us form um, recommendations and observations from a consultant's point of view. Um, we've been doing this for many years. Uh, we use it as an inclusive and interactive model where self-assessment is fully encouraged um, around the world. All the software allows people to get involved and our people are lead leaders and, and driven, experienced uh, personnel who want to help and find solutions for you to achieve the most you can get out of your pitch and your budget. The link between Sports Labs and ProPitch is very, very simple. Uh, ProPitch is a natural and hybrid division of Sports Labs. So ProPitch deliver all our natural and hybrid operations. Sports Labs tests technology in sport, whether it's ball testing, artificial turf. So there's a, there's a direct link there between the companies. However, the operations that we undertake under each brand is slightly different. We've been surface experts for, for many, many years. Um, and we, we obviously like to share knowledge in the industry to help everyone succeed in what they're trying to achieve. I think what's important today is remembering that the purpose of these programmes and the development of, of such uh, standards is to help accuracy. Objectively, it's important that things are repeatable. Um, and I guess that's what Mikhail will talk about today in terms of the programme and how they excel in doing that through other uh, products in the FIFA programme, but essentially we're here to try and make sure the data is as accurate as possible. And therefore, when you make recommendations, decisions or take action, it's powerful and has the effect you hope for. So the equipment developments and the methodologies are there to help everyone succeed, whether it's a consultant or self-assessment capacity. And the equipment's there for everyone to have a shot at themselves. I think what's important to point out here as well is that the Data can be used to risk mitigate on player injury. It can be used for a competitive advantage or preparation leading to a big game. So the opportunity is not just there for ground staff, it's there to share information with the sports scientists and the teams above and beyond the day-to-day -day operations of building a good pitch. So finally, before I hand over to Mikhail, I'm just going to talk about the, the, the data journey. The data journey is important. Um, this is a, a screen of of what we talked about maybe five years ago about how we were going to do this um, this data journey. And we've actually put this into practice. The background of the screen talks about the number of reports, the location, the anonymized data, and how we can then go from data to insights to action. We've undertaken quite a few research projects this year, and we are now over, have over 2 million data points. Um, and Dean will talk about how we're using them to help people um, further in the presentation. I think we use a system that you can see there now that's live to to as such ask questions and as I think the best way to describe it is turf Google, ask questions on natural and, and hybrid turf. 
So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Mikael, who's going to share the screen and um, hopefully uh, we will chat to you after. So uh, what I wanted to, to present today is the document we have for the FIFA quality program for natural playing surfaces. And uh, the way I want to present it is uh, first to show how to access this document from the website, the FIFA website, because everything is published online. Uh, it's important for us also in terms of uh, uh, transparency. So here you should see uh, the FIFA website. Uh, you go here on the top right inside FIFA under technical, then you can see standards and you land uh, on the standards page uh, with the logos FIFA basic quality quality pro. Um, so on this page, first of all, you can see they are all our quality program. We have 10 at the moment. So they are grouped in three categories, uh, playing surfaces, equipment, and technologies. Concerning the surfaces, we have currently three, one for artificial turf, under football turf, one for futsal surfaces, indoor surfaces, and the one of interest for today, natural playing surfaces. Also, I take the opportunity to show you that at the bottom of this page, uh, you uh, can find an article about the FIFA quality mark. So if you want to understand the difference between FIFA basic quality and quality pro, uh, quickly on that quality pro is uh, designed for professional use, aiming for optimum performance of the athlete. Quality is uh, more for community level, focusing on durability and safety. And uh, FIFA Basic is our non-commercial non -commercial, uh, mark, which corresponds to the very minimum quality uh, we defined for different technologies. So I go now to the, uh, again, page of standards, and I click now on natural playing surfaces. And on this page, you find the documents related to the quality program. So to start, uh, I will open the one that is called FIFA Natural Turf Guideline 2023. The reason is because it's a very uh, good document. It's uh, a comprehensive document that uh, go through the design. I will open it. Uh, so you can see. Uh, so it goes from so from design and the uh, and the pitch uh, pitch design and construction, then uh, to grass selection, so which is a bit below. So you can see it's a quite a comprehensive document. Uh, big document. Uh, this document is an update, by the way, of an existing version, and we spent uh, quite some time with our colleagues from uh, pitch management to update it. So we have here pitch infrastructure with heating system, um, the fans, lighting. Um, so I go really quickly for you at least to see it, and I really encourage uh, you to to have a look to this document. We have it currently also in German and in French. Uh, you can find it on the website also in the when you change the language. So the grass selection, this part here was really useful for us to also share to our member associations because we have a lot of questions uh, depending on the climate. Um, then the sward establishment. And the point I want to make is I will go in the last at the last chapter, which is about pitch monitoring. Up. 
resource planning, and then normally I have pitch monitoring here. So in this part, then you will see that we refer to the <coughs> FIFA quality program for natural playing surfaces. Um, so here is the, the test manual. So the test manual, it's a document that was uh, developed uh, in a collaborative approach between football federations, FIFA, UFA, uh, test institutes, and also consultants. So to, to design the, the program and also to develop the, the test manual with test methods, uh, we, we had a particular approach is that uh, the working group was divided in two, one technical, so with mostly the test institute consultant, but still uh, some representant of uh, football federation, FIFA and UFA. And the second uh, group was only uh, composed of football federation, FIFA and UFA. Uh, the idea behind that was uh, to have a group where we speak together, what do we need from the test institute? And then from that, we had uh, a few answers is we need to have two types of assessments. Um, so here it's described in the test manual, the full and reduced assessment. So the, the reduced assessment is more a routine assessment to follow the quality of the, the surface. And the full assessment is more a periodic assessment that you could do depending on your budget, but uh, twice a year before and at the end of the season uh, or to prepare a big tournament three months in advance to identify or to have a good understanding how is the surface and if there are uh, improvements needed and in um, maybe some budget uh, to allocate for uh, improving the, the surface. <clears throat> so we also decided with this uh, group from the football community that we wanted agronomy parameters, but also player surface interaction and ball surface interaction, which are key for the performance of, of the players. Um, so starting from that, then uh, we, we worked we, with the test institute and consultant to develop this test manual. So here you can see the list with all the tests and, sorry, of all the tests. So the first one being the full assessment. So you can see the full uh, list with performance and agronomy test. And for the reduced assessments, it's a focus on the agronomy part. So which include, for example, surface hardness, sword height, root depth, size depth, sword color, wound coverage, uh, pest and diseases, and uh, uh, moisture content. Then, uh, we are part of the, the quality program at FIFA. So what we do, we standardize. So one thing is to test, but we also need to standardize the way uh, uh, test institute we will assess the surface. So we define uh, the map uh, with the test, different test position. The different test position, if you are familiar to the football turf program, is the same map. Uh, reason it was decided to be like this is because this cover uh, quite well the, the complete surface. And it's something quite important for natural uh, turf uh, to identify if there is any issues with the consistency or some areas that are maybe more compacted than other or any other parameters that will differ in a specific area. So it's important to cover all the pitch. Uh, so we test uh, the 19 uh, position for most of the, the tests, but for some of them, we only test uh, six position, which are A, L, K, G, Q, H. So you can see A, L, um, K, G, Q here on the top and H. So this also come from uh, the football turf quality program. It's for tests that uh, <clears throat> we don't necessarily want to have a, um, a precise mapping, but we want to have an idea of the general uh, <coughs> performance of the pitch. So here you can see the list of tests and with the different uh, test location. 
One important thing um, I want to add also is at the beginning of the document, we define what we consider natural turf. Um, because it's also a question we receive about is hybrid turf uh, considered as natural turf? And the answer is yes. So here you can see the the, the four uh, uh, classification we have. So fully natural, natural reinforced road, road zone, uh, natural in situ stitch fibers, and natural synthetic carpet based. So here it's what we consider natural playing surfaces. So um, <clears throat> that said, uh, so we have the list of tests, we have where to test, and then in the test manual, you have the exact procedures that uh, has to be followed. And these test procedures are followed by um, the, the test institute. And every year we do a test event where we will uh, compare the results of all the accredited test institute at the same venue. And then it allows us to give them accreditation uh, for the program. So after the rest of the document is only the methodology uh, for the different tests. So I won't go into detail for that. So I will go back now to the other documents. Uh, <clears throat> the, the last document being the rating system. So as I started to explain um, what we do in the quality program, we standardize. So having the results of a test institute of a pitch, how can we uh, define if it's a good pitch or a bad pitch in terms of performance or in terms of agronomy? So with the working group, um, we then worked on that to define um, a rating scale. So <clears throat> the, the first thing important is with the federation, we decided we want five, five categories from an acceptable quality to excellent quality. And uh, we applied it also for other parameters and we, one that is maybe the most important is the consistency. So from highly variable to very consistent uh, pitch. So for each um, uh, rating category, you can see we attribute points. So 10 being the best and one being the lowest uh, and same for the consistency. So here we have a specific case for subjective assessment where we only have three categories uh, from one point to 10 and in the, the middle it's five. Here we detail the, the formula. Um, it's not very complicated. Uh, you will, I think, understand it easily. Uh, so here you have the list of tests. And um, for most of the tests, you have the, the, the main characteristic here, the ball ribbon, and below you can see the consistency. So for both, uh, we define ranges that we attribute to a category. And then if uh, the average on the pitch is, let's continue with the vertical ball ribbon, is 1.05 meter, then it goes under the category satisfy, satisf, one, two, two, satisfactory uh, quality. Uh, so we attribute five points. And let's say the consistency uh, is very good. Uh, and then uh, which falls in the plus minus 10%. So we attribute um, a 10 points for consistency. So this is when we look at each uh, characteristic. But then, as we do a, a long list of tests uh, to assess the pitch, uh, we also uh, wanted to differentiate uh, the importance of each test. So it's why, that's why on the table at the end, you see uh, here the column weighting, uh, which correspond to coefficients we attribute to each uh, characteristic. So this gives more importance uh, to some uh, tests that within the group uh, we believed was uh, the, the best approach to uh, quantify the quality of the pitch. 
the advantage of that is all the accredited lab uh, will use the same test method, but also will uh, hopefully uh, ultimately give the same rating of the pitch. So we are speaking the same language at the end because we can all agree if it's an excellent quality pitch or a poor quality one. Um, so then we replicated it for each characteristic. So the first part here are the performances, and here yeah, you see a more the agronomy part. So with the different coefficients and the different categories. Uh, one point I can uh, highlight is in agronomy, we, for some characteristic, we differentiate uh, some type of uh, grass, cool season grass or warm season grass. Even uh, we started to differentiate uh, hybrid carpet based or stitched because from uh, the feedback of uh, agronomists, uh, they are really um, advised to uh, take into account the, the different uh, type of surface. So um, here is the, um, the rating uh, system. So you can access it online. It's in five languages. So I think we have uh, even Italian, uh, Spanish, German, French, uh, English. Um, so we have this document in, uh, in different languages. And this is maybe the easiest one uh, to get uh, the overview of the of the program so you can see the full and reduced assessment and then the the rating category um, so once a test institute uh, an accredited test institute do uh, the testing reduced or full assessment um, the benefit using an accredited test institute is you will get a fifa report so here i wanted to show uh, to the participant uh, how it looks like uh, a FIFA test report, because as I mentioned before, it was designed by uh, the football community uh, with uh, Football Federation, uh, FIFA, UFA. Uh, so it's what we want for our tournaments, what we want to see in a report. So the first page, uh, it's a photo of the stadium to quickly identify where it is, and then the general information with the field name, grass uh, species, the type of system, uh, confederation, member association. Here, very important, the FIFA test number, because we have a complete traceability system through our database. So it helps us also to identify if it's a valid FIFA test report. And also we can track uh, when it was uh, reported to FIFA, or we can then have a look in our database to, to find uh, this uh, report and to validate it. So the edition of the test report. So currently, we only have one edition from the, from the year 2021. The second page is uh, for administration purpose, see who tested and uh, where uh, with the signatures. And the third page, uh, it, we spend a lot of time in the discussion, but it's a simple, uh, presentation of the result, but very important that uh, this has been designed for uh, people who are not necessarily experts in, uh, in uh, <clears throat> agronomy. So they can quickly understand how, how good or how bad is the pitch. So the first line, you see the score, the general score, and then below you have the scale. So you can see that 88% it's green, green meaning it's good, and 88% falls into pitch is, in, uh, is excellent with no limitations. So that's the first information. And an important difference, um, because this uh, scale, we took it from uh, what UFA was already uh, using in their competition, this uh, five uh, category uh, scale. But in their assessment, they were um, in the percentage or in the, the rating they were already giving, they were including uh, the risk uh, assessment about the, the quality of the lines. Uh, and here in the group, when we spoke together, then we, we decided, no, uh, the assessment made by the test institute, it's to know the quality of the surface. So we want to know that. So that's what you see here. It's only concerned the pitch. The second part, is an additional risk assessment. 
So here, it's also very important information because the day the test institute comes on the pitch, the, the pitch is in a certain condition, but maybe the tournament three months later, you have 10 games or there will be a transition of the season. Um, maybe also uh, they don't have all the equipment required uh, for the tournament organization for the maintenance. Uh, maybe they will need to invest uh, a bit in the maintenance equipment. Also, we consider heating systems or the profile and the construction, which has a big impact on uh, the quality over time uh, of, um, of a natural big surface. And here we use exactly the same scale, so five categories from high risk to very low risk. And you can see we use uh, the same system of color. So from this third page of the report, um, uh, decision makers in a tournament, they don't need to know what are the results of the pitch, but they can identify, okay, we need to allocate resources or everything is good with the pitch, we have no issue. And then the second benefit is as it's a standardized approach and in the tournament, you maybe have 10 different uh, stadiums, you can uh, prioritize which uh, stadium uh, or which yeah, pitch will uh, need more resources or it's more urgent, more important to uh, invest um, for for the, the the pitch that will have the maybe the lower rating or where the risk is the highest. So this is the the, the third page of the report, but the, the, the first page about the result. But you see there is no specific numbers. So then the, the next page here, we go a bit into detail uh, because it says 88% uh, excellent quality, but okay, let's see in a bit more into detail. And here it's the same approach is maybe for people that have a, a better understanding about uh, ergonomy and pitch quality, if or if they are just curious, they can see if everything is perfect or if there are some uh, parameters that can be improved uh, before game. So here you can see everything is excellent or good, but some parameters, for example, consistency of vertical deformation, highly variable. So it's an indication nothing is perfect. It's not bad, but here we have something that maybe we, we could have a look at. Here, for example, in the consistency and the, of the inf infiltration rate. And again, we, we keep the same uh, rating scale with the five categories. So the next part, it's where we start to see numbers. So here it's very, uh, it's designed for, um, yeah, I don't know if I can say experts, but people that really understand uh, the tests that are performed during the assessment. And here you have all the results uh, with the average and the consistency. So here you can yeah, go deeper in the analysis. So here we present all the results. Here, after we have some maps, if the test institute want to provide a heat map about, I don't know, the hardness and the consistency, uh, so they can uh, insert it in the report. And at the end, uh, photographic evidences. So here there was no, not much uh, photos, but um, from the feedback we had, uh, it generally well appreci uh, appreciated to have um, the maintenance uh, resources. So the mowers, tractors, uh, everything they have uh, on site. So here is that's, uh, the presentation of the, the FIFA report. So it's where the benefit it is to, to follow the quality program. So traceability uh, FIFA reports that is designed clearly for uh, preparation or, or the ongoing uh, tournaments. Um, the last document I wanted to uh, show to the group is uh, since the last round of in, uh, we uh, decided to um, to provide uh, a document similar to a certificate. So again, we cannot uh, provide certificates for natural pitches because the quality can change from a day to another. So here it's a one-pager um, that is uh, 
provided at the same time of uh, FIFA report. That is a summary. Uh, you can see is more or less the, the third page of the report where you can understand how good uh, or how bad is the pitch in uh, just uh, uh, in just a look. So here it's simple. Uh, we explain that it's from the quality program and we uh, declare the reference of the FIFA test number again for the traceability and the date of testing. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to, to present to the group uh, for the quality program. Hey, hi there, everyone. Uh, I'm Keith McPherson. Uh, I am the business manager of uh, ProPitch. I uh, here to talk to you uh, for Michael's presentation there about the FIFA system. Just a little bit about um, ProPitch uh, and how we gather data. Obviously, um, referred to Michael about the FIFA system and the two systems are very uh, similar in the regard that we're both doing pitch testing and um, data collection. Obviously, the FIFA system will certify. Uh, pro pitch system is more about our consultants using the data to uh, advise on pitches uh, and then obviously uh, via the online app and portal the ground staff um, or uh, stadium owners being able to collect data specific to their pitches so i have a quick overview on how we do that and then uh, pass over to uh, my colleague dean so obviously the system you may be aware we've got our own uh, online app I'll try and get that to focus on the screen there without it disappearing. Um, and the, the app basically is our method of collecting data. Um, so you can go into the app on your Apple Android device and basically start a pitch assessment. Um, and that's at the core of the system. There's other features in there where you can message internally within your organization or um, make notes, you know, You've got your own profile on there and everything, or even request assessments from our consultants. But at the core of it, it's a, a tool for data collection. So when you use the physical tools on site, you can quickly record the numbers on the app, and that then uh, goes up onto your online portal. So what I'll do quickly now is I will show share my screen uh, and show you the online portal. It's here. So this is uh, a view of the online portal where um, all your data goes into. So we've got the dashboard view here, basically looking at um, six venues um, on this account. Um, and it shows us a very quick overview of you know where those venues are in their journey at that time. So we've got a couple of four stars there, a three star and a couple of two stars. <clears throat> if we dive into a venue um, more specifically, we maybe learn a little bit more about it. Um, this particular assessment was a, a self-assessment undertaken. We just looked at turf quality, um, so it generates a score. Um, we can see that it's increased by 9% from the last assessment. Um, down here, we've got a wee trend graph that just shows our progress in the star rating um, against our average usage. And you can see, as per the last assessment just undertaken, we had a 9% increase, which resulted in it moving from a four star uh, from a three star to a four star um, you know a little bit of history of the test uh, a venue overview and uh, various information about when the when the last test was conducted um, from within that you can then dive deeper into your individual results you know you can really go as deep as you want down to individual test locations but you know in general we find that, that most users are um, looking for a highline kind of overview um, and then they use the PDF reports, which you can download on your phone uh, or via the system to then share it internally, uh, potentially with your, your colleagues in the, the grounds department or even with stadium management <clears throat> or what we've seen increasingly a lot of people do is um, they use the pitch quality reports to um, justify pitch quality to user groups. So it might be a team that's coming to train <clears throat> or prospective clients that they're looking to attract. And you can do all that within the system. You know, you, you can download the report, you can email it internally uh, from the system directly to a, a, a colleague. Um, and you can also manage uh, various aspects, whether you're messaging our consultants um, or messaging your own team members, requesting assessments, all that can be done from either the app on your phone or the online portal. Uh, following that, 
I mean, what do we do with the data and what can we learn from the data? Um, that's a topic that Dean's going to speak to in a minute. Um, around our uh, data dashboards, um, I'll quickly flick onto this now. Uh, just a very high line view, you'll see that we've got a trial set of data in here. Um, just to demonstrate for you today, um, data is very powerful. And obviously, the more data we collect, um, the question then has to be asked is, okay, but what do we do with that data? So obviously we see value in collecting data and we do that uh, on a regular basis, but that data is really used to uh, inform and empower the decisions we're making. Um, like I said, Dean's really going to go into this with a lot, a lot bit more detail than me, but you know, there's different ways of presenting it, whereas we might look at different pitch constructions or a world, a kind of more general worldview, country by country. Um, you know, you could be looking at uh, specific parameters per country. So in this case, traction, for example. Um, within the FIFA system, we do a lot of um, different tests that we maybe don't do in the in the pro pitch system. So like say your um, chalk absorption defamation tests and look at different parameters within them. And um, so, you know, when we gather a lot of data, we're able to analyze those and what do they tell us and do they have influences on other um, parameters that we maybe don't immediately draw conclusions to. Um, and then how can we compare and see trends in time? So I take us graph for example is a traction graph where we're seeing peak traction in September and lowest traction in January. It's maybe a, an obvious comparison, but obviously it's until you verify it and compare it then um, and validate it, it's important. Um, and then you might even look at uh, different construction types uh, and how that's done. And it really shows like where, where we're taking the data from the field and then putting it into these sort of systems, we can really start to learn what is influencing uh, pitches and with ultimately the better goal of being better informed um, and be able to advise our clients, um, clubs, federations, stadiums uh, in a better way and with data to back that up. So I will wrap up there um, before I go too far into what Dean's going to talk to you about on the uh, data dashboard. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the, the webinar. Thanks, everyone. OK, so firstly, we are going to look at different construction types. Initially, stitch hybrid, which rose to popularity in the early 2000s. Carpet hybrid, which has become popular to the market within the last five years, as it's an ideal solution for multifunctional venues hosting concerts and non-footballing events. Then there's natural surfaces that are no longer common in elite stadiums in the UK and tend to only exist in the lower leagues or in places like Germany or in warm season climates. Warm season grasses and hybrids don't tend to mix well. This is due to the complexity of transitioning between grass types as a season adjusts. For example, in some territories, you have extremely warm climates across the summer months and extremely cold across the winter months. When growing a cool season grass into a warm season base, the addition of artificial fibres makes things far more difficult and challenging. We have now begun our journey of putting all of our data in one place to begin finding trends. We have collected pitch data from over 3,000 pitches across the world in various different climates. We've collected over 2 million data points in the process. Today, we are going to show you some of the trends we have come across in the hope they raise awareness for best practice for you and your facility. We believe these insights will shape the future of maintenance practices. You will see shortly that our insights prove to be quite interesting. Some of them prove what we already knew. However, it's good to have factual information to back that up. Beginning with surface hardness. We know from our data that the ideal firmness value is between 80 and 84 gravities. You can see here that once we get to October, it's difficult to consistently achieve that value until April. Naturally, softer pitches in the winter period are difficult to prepare and repair. And as a result, surface consistency is difficult to achieve.
When comparing the average hardness of a hybrid pitch in comparison to a natural one, you can see there is far greater consistency. Very rarely does a hybrid pitch fall below the ideal impact value of 83 gravities. This provides greater opportunity to produce an elite playing surface. When looking at vertical deformation, the best pitches we see have a surface deformation of 4.8 millimeters. Unfortunately, this is difficult to control over the winter period when pitches are getting softer. As you can see over the winter period from October to March, pitches deform up to six millimeters. This is aligned with the values achieved by our one to two star pitches. This makes achieving surface consistency difficult and grass coverage and evenness can be lost as a result. Now look at the consistency that can be achieved with a hybrid pitch. Very rarely does a hybrid surface deviate outside of the ideal deformation value of 4.8 millimeters. That value near enough remains consistent all year round. Interestingly, the drier the pitch, the better the surface. Our five star pitches an average moisture reading of 22.5%. The quality of surfaces tends to de decrease as ground moisture is on the rise, with one star pitches having an average moisture reading of 32.5%. Again, from October through to March, pitch average moisture is far greater than the desired value of 22%. This shows us that irrigation is completely unnecessary outside of pitch preparation for fixtures throughout the winter. With traction, the consistency achieved by hybrid pitches is a simil similar story. An ideal value for traction is between 40 to 50 Newton meters. Hybrid pitches tend to achieve that for nine months of the year, whilst natural surfaces tend not to achieve that value at all. This shows pitches without hybrid reinforcement to be very difficult to achieve elite quality. We are often asked what the ideal moisture value is for playing hours. That's a difficult question to answer as soil and sand based pitches act completely different to moisture. However, our data tells us that pitches with a moisture value of 15 to 25% tend to produce the desired firmness value of 83 gravities. Thatch slash organic debris is without doubt the biggest contributor to decreased pitch quality. As you will see at the bottom of the graph, the lower the measurement of organic debris, the higher the chance of achieving greater pitch quality. Ideally, thatch slash organic debris should not be greater than five millimeters as it has a negative effect on traction as well as turf health. Surfaces are only achieving that desired value in August and September and June and July. Of those months, more often than not, this measurement is low due to the recent renovation practices. This further proves a point that renovation of pitches is the foundation for achieving a good surface all year round. Grass coverage obviously decreases across the winter months. We know pitches will be softer. We know they will deform more. We know the quality will lessen with a higher moisture content. All of these are contributing factors to lost grass coverage. Winter pitches are prepared in the summer, so be sure to enter the winter period in a position of strength. Now this is fascinating. Look at how hybrid pitches follow the exact same trend of natural pitches across the season. However, remain consistently better for grass coverage. Very rarely do hybrid pitches fall below 90% grass coverage. Lastly, mass root depth. Unfortunately, this follows a familiar downward trend across the winter. Be sure to measure your mass root, mass root depth often, because this graph shows that if you are ever achieving a root depth greater than 80 millimeters, then you're probably in a good place. 
This feat is only regularly achieved for four months of the year and three of them are before the colder weather begins. To conclude, a great deal of our pitch data is collected in the Northern Hemisphere due to the high demands of industry testing in this region. Obviously, it's conclusive that hybrid pitches are superior to the natural ones. However, a great deal of our data is gathered from stadium pitches where the budgets are higher or training ground environments where shade and airflow restrictions are limited or enhanced. This information is live on our Power BI portal. If anyone listening would like to specifically look at the trends of their construction or region, please get in touch with us. Hello. We've got Ian Craig joining us on the call. Um, Ian's in Ivory Coast at the moment, so his uh, internet is slightly uh, slow, but we're going to try and have a Q&A with Ian here as we go. So Ian, thanks for joining us first in the tournament delivery you're at. It's obviously taking up a lot of your time, but um, I guess a couple of things in terms of engaging and, and going forward. You've done a few of the FIFA assessments already. Um, can you take us through the process of for example, the test time, how long it takes, uh, the access to this, the site and the equipment you take, that, that type of information for anyone that's looking to get involved. Um, yeah, thanks, Neil. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fairly straightforward process, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we will turn up on site. We generally need around three hours um, of sort of uninterrupted access to the pitch in order to to carry out all the all the testing we'll obviously bring everything required with us um and and just sort of work through the work through the process um throughout like i say it takes generally around about three hours to carry out a full assessment if uninterrupted which you know if, if i'm honest is is, is quite is quite uncommon so i would i would generally budget a little bit more time for that um but you know it, it's like i say a, a fairly straightforward process and certainly if we've done the i suppose the prep work um the prep work beforehand and we're we're turning up sort of armed already with information and and um you know we can we can just go on with the testing and and recording of results Th thanks, Ian. In terms of the equipment you take, is it, is it a couple boxes? H what type of equipment do you turn up with on site? Yeah, so everything required to to carry out the testing. So it's normally, yeah, two to three, two to three boxes that we'll just leave. Um, generally, leave them pitch side and then sort of assemble any equipment um, and transport that individually between the test locations, just really to sort of minimise any traffic or potential damage we might do to the surface um but you know you're looking at the the AAA obviously being the the biggest and, and probably most cumbersome of the of the equipment um but you know these are sort of wheel transported or or you know if 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 necessary carried from from uh, test location to test location and we also have the you know the traction device which again is is the one that 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 would leave a mark on the surface if you want but again we'll, we will always be here to repair any damage done it's it's no worse than a you know a, a minor divot there uh, from from a match or a training session um the rest of the equipment is is fairly straightforward we have the rebound equipment the the ball roll ramp um you know these are all fairly straightforward standard bits of kit um that are sort of easily transported around the site okay i mean leading on from that it's actually a good time to ask the question around self-assessment so we, we fully encourage self-assessment as a company you know when we come and test a pitch it's a time stamp on that given time and day the self-assessment provides a really good opportunity for people to be in control of their own pitch passport you know in terms of equipment what can people get do with equipment and to what equipment is available for them to do self-assessment well and again i think depending on the the depth of assessment that that you're looking to do and, and and the regularity with which you're looking to do it but most of the equipment bar perhaps the the triple a i think is, is is readily available 
the Clegghammer traction devices, moisture meters, even rolling rebound kit are reasonably easily accessible. Um, and I think, you know, as you say, I think I would always encourage people to do self assessments. You know, when we do, uh, uh, let's say, a fee assessment on, on any given day, you're right, it, it is pretty much just a snapshot of how the pitch is performing at that time. Um, and, you know, we all know the turf that changes from day to day given the weather or various um, maintenance practices that have been carried out. So, um, taking regular data, you know, I suppose as, as often as you can really is, is is really good practice. And I think from from my perspective as a as a consultant, if I come in armed with that information, it, it gives me a better idea of what to expect rather than 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 just turning up blind if you want on the day, testing a pitch and 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 sort of almost being surprised by the results. You know, it's it's, it's good to know if there is a, a degree of self assessment data there. It gives me an idea of, of of what to expect when when I start the test. I mean, just thinking right now out loud is that obviously in some of the UEFA venues they've got legacy kits throughout the tournaments and and used by the, for self assessment. I think that's a great thing to note is that self assessment kit can be bought very cheaply, very easily. And I, I guess leading on from that, one of the other things that I was going to ask you about was. When you're coming to site, a consultant like yourself, it's a great advantage for someone to really pick your brains, be prepared and give you all the information prior to coming so you can give them the most you know, accurate recommendations and observations. What can site staff do to prepare their pitch? Or for example, I know we've got risk assessments. What can they do prior to you coming to site to be get the most out of your visit? Um, I mean, I guess just just be as, as prepared as possible so that we can get the testing done. I mean, the testing takes up a lot of the time. So, you know, the the, the more efficient we can make that, um, the better. Uh, I would always say just to prepare a pitch for a test to prepare it the, the same way you would for a match. You know, we want we want indicative match day conditions or, or training session conditions. So I would always say set up the pitch the way you would for a match or training session depending on the site um you know you talk about the risk assessments these are these are very very useful um it's really good information again for you know me as the consultant to have prior to coming in and it's it, it's quite simple really so it's quite a simple questionnaire really just anything that i think's relevant um relevant information for me to have i'll ask that question um Within the within the risk assessment, um, so that yeah, like I say we have as much information as possible. If I have all the information, it might be on, you know, maintenance. It may be on fertilizer inputs, machinery, uh, machinery numbers, uh, machinery availability. If I have that information to hand prior to testing, it, it saves time and you know hunting through sheds and trying to make sure we have all the all the right equipment. So. You know, in terms of preparation, ha having all the information beforehand is is probably easiest because it then allows any extra time just to sort of have a discussion. We can go over this information. We can look at maintenance plans and anything that you know we think needs changed or, or tweaked. Even um, you know, we can we can discuss that at the time, and, and we don't need to spend the site time sort of trying to gather that information. Yeah, I think um, just to kind of highlight the fact that the risk assessments are there to be used. I mean, it, it takes it doesn't take too long to fill it in. Um, it's in different languages. So if you want to do the risk assessment, please reach out to our team and we can engage and help you. So a lot of uh, benefit in doing that in terms of finding out your resources and where quick wins can be brought and where also there would be things you could take to your board and, and discuss for future development purposes. And that's where the consultant can really support you in that journey. A lot of our consultants are uh, hands on experience from from being on the ground. But the agronomic background of Ian and consultants like that are very beneficial for you to have that um, expert debrief as well. Um, Ian, so I'm aware you have got a very busy day, tournament delivery, but one final question I've got for you is, you know, this time of year, um, I guess we've got climatic changes in the both the northern and southern hemisphere, warm and cool season grasses. 
is there something that you would highlight that people should be looking out for, maybe diseases or pests that you, they can maybe start to uh, look for now? Um, just a, a couple of quick tips for, for the, the listeners. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that the, the main thing at, at this time of year, if we take the, you know, the Northern Hemisphere, obviously we're, we're temperatures starting to drop, um, but we've still got that sort of reasonably high soil temperatures. We've still got morning dew, things like that. The, 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 the pitch sits wet overnight, um, you know, it, it increases disease pressure, you know, so we do tend to see um, increases in, in disease activity, um, you know, just simply due to the humidity. So, you know, a big, a big thing at this time of year, you know, the, the growth slowing down, you might not be mowing as often, you know, you not, might not be cu out cutting every morning, but I think it's, it's important to note that, you know, keeping that plant dry is, is important. So if you're, if you're not cutting, you know, look at getting out, um, with the dew brush in the morning and just just taking the dew off the surface and, and keeping the keeping the surface as dry as we can um just to try and sort of reduce that this pressure because the trouble at this time of year and again you sort of going into the winter for example if you get disease and lose grass cover now once you start to lose growing conditions the recovery becomes slower or a, a in worst cases, it stops. So any any grass cover you lose, you lose now. You've lost it through the through the winter. So it's important that you, I suppose, employ best practices and and try and keep the the disease pressure minimised um, at at these sort of key times of the year. Brian Ian, thank you for taking the time out your day. Uh, what grass species are you look, looking at today? Uh, well, it's a, it's a mixture, if I'm honest. I've got both Bermuda and uh, Paspalum out here. Uh, so obviously, warm season, warm season through the year out here. So um, yeah, we have our we have our fair share of of uh, issues out here. The disease pressure's very very high, as the you know the humidity's high pretty much all year round. We're sort of coming towards the end of rainy season at the moment. Um, it doesn't really feel like it because we're seeing we're seeing a lot of it at the moment. So obviously disease pressure is high, and then the you know you can get some really aggressive uh, pests out here as as well. We're we're having some some serious issues with with grey worm at the moment in a lot of these sites. So it's uh, yeah we're not we're not without our challenges out here, but it's you know it's it's it's, it's going well so far. Fantastic. Well, listen, thank you very much, Ian, and stay safe and we'll catch up with you. So I think I would like to say thank you to all the speakers today um, and also all the people that have attended. It's a very big delegation uh, to, to, to listen to what we're talking about. It's important information, something that you can harness and, and put into effect in your own, your own self-assessment capacity or in your own um, staffing uh, or, or operations. As I mentioned, the recording of the webinar will be put up and we will share that with all the delegates. Um, if you want to get involved in the pa Pitch Passport journey, you can either reach out to us, you can get more information on the FIFA Resource Hub. Um, and again, I think we'd just like to thank everyone for joining today and hopefully you can use that information to your benefit.